Hello, everyone. Welcome to the PipCast 3000, a bi-weekly podcast that happens every other Sunday, 10 a.m. Pacific, and we talk about gaming news and Fallout. Uh, this is my co-host, Bad Company Sarge. Hi there. And I'm Kato Genesis, and uh, we're we're just two two guys just hanging out, talking about Fallout. Isn't that right, Sarge? It sure is, buddy. <laughs> and we're hoping that others join in on the conversation because we have a tip of the day and a comment of the cast where you can contribute to the conversation by becoming a comment um, that we talk about. Um, first is our tip of the day, um, and that was f- suggestion by Timothy Duffy, who commented last episode, uh, posture is important. And that had to do with probably my my rant about my general tendon and muscle health, um, my shoulder had had been giving me issues for the last little while. I I got uh, physical therapy going and uh, various different exercises to uh, push my shoulder back to to be more in a more ergonomic position. Um, I've spent a lot of years hunching and it has started to do damage. So I'm trying to reverse it while I can. <laughs> so yes, posture is very important. I don't want anyone to start to deal with pain earlier than they should, especially if you're sitting at a desk a long time. Um, I didn't even say like the different kind of stuff we're going to be talking about today. Um, People uh, will have seen. G- give them a little bit of credit, <laughs> Kato. If they, if they can't work it out for themselves, they should get out of here. <laughs> it was all on we the only... screen. There's links in the description. There's timestamps as well. Like, what more do you want? Do we have to say it all out loud for you? You'll, you'll find out what's happening after it's happened. This is only on YouTube, so you've got the video anyway. Sarge, it's only on the screen for so many seconds now, and then it goes yeah, into B-roll. Yeah, but you got timestamps in the description. Gameplay. Like, come yeah, on, you. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna give the audience some credit. You have to give them a bit of credit, or else you just stop pandering down to the dumbest person in the audience. <laughs> hey, dumbest person in the audience, i am got a problem with you, I'm not gonna pander to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was gonna lead that into, since last episode the Gamer article was really popular, we're gonna go over another one. And yep. I'll just leave it at that. That's fine. <laughs> anyway, comment of the cast. Whose comment did we grab, Sarge? We grabbed a comment from either Peas Ham or Pea Sham. I'm now that I'm reading it, I'm not too certain which one it's supposed to be. Um, I want to say Pea Sham. Pea Sham. See, I was leaning more toward Peas Ham because, like, peas and ham is food. But man, it's please comment and let us know. Are you Pea Sham or Peas Ham? That's <laughs> that's the most important thing you can do. <laughs> All right, but whoever they are, they said, I wouldn't say the city settings are getting old. What's getting old is them not being very renovated at all. <laughs> That's how you say renovated, right? Uh, it's been hundreds of years. People would have started cleaning things up already, making new cities, no less. Fallout Stu. I haven't had to speak for a week. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> you, you can have to That's take okay. this from me. I've been living in a cave. <sighs> Pretty, uh, pretty well too. So. Okay. Yes. Fallout 2 started doing that, kinda. And the everyone just kind of forgot. That's on peas and ham that time, that's not me. That's how it's wrote. Uh, even though realistically society in Fallout should be at the point where some basic hygiene can be considered in some settlements, sometimes maybe. But nah, everything just looks like beep just because. Yes. It's a pretty good comment. Thank you for the comment. <laughs> Yeah. Peace ham, peace ham. Mm-hmm. I think um, there's a point to that. Although I also do think that like some places have started doing that a bit. There's a bit of a problem where the yeah. most recent game is the earliest in the timeline, but that's also the one where people are building up the most. Because it's a gameplay thing. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is a kind of a funny split where it's like the closest to the apocalypse and people are rebuilding more than the people the furthest away. Sci-fi things added to the Atom Shop to make it more yeah. uh futuristic and clean too. Yep. I mean we are starting so. to get a little bit of renovation. I'd say Diamond City is pretty well built up considering. Like yeah. it is still kind of like shantyish and stuff, but you know, you're not going to get like full on infrastructure like we do have in the modern day. So yeah. I, I think they're well, we're getting a bit more renovated and stuff. Like things are getting more towards that, but I do still get that it is a bit ridiculous how little there has been for some places. That's been built up. I want to mention that uh, since Fallout 2 was used as an example here, um, and I'm guessing 
uh, more along the lines of maybe the NCR or something like that. Mm -hmm. Several locations had a GEC. That's one thing. Yep. Um, which is the, you know, <laughs> become more advanced very quickly yeah. uh, MacGuffin. But also, I believe, I want to say that Shady Sands was helped by the Brotherhood of Steel um, to become the NCR. I'm... I... The, the Brotherhood helped someone. <laughs> I don't remember who, but I'm pretty sure it was the NCR. My brain is obviously not not there right now, but um, I feel like there was there was like a, a little bit of a treaty going on uh, prior to you know all the other stuff that happened that caused the Brotherhood to uh, pr go pretty close to extinct in Fallout 2. I don't know. Anyway, good comment. P sham. P ham. P p p p ham. <laughs> However you say your name. Could be PSM. Let's go. Nice. Let's go to the let's go to the news. Let's let's go yep. to the, there's there's a bunch of cool update stuff and also developer stuff and award stuff. Mm-hmm. Some good, some bad. A mix today. But the first one's about Sky Oblivion. Mm. Yeah. There was a huge update video put out, um, which we have linked in the description below. A lot of just uh, showing off what kind of stuff they've been adding to this Skyrim mod overhaul to make oblivion in the skyrim engine there were a few quotes in here something along the lines of we can see the end of the road with this project so it's it's getting pretty dang close to being you know done but that can mean anything since it's a fan project still yeah. <laughs> but what they showed was 15 a little over 15 straight minutes of talking about uniques stadric weapons um which things that i like uh, the goblins and their factions, all of them or, or most of them being um, made from scratch assets too, which is really cool. It's a huge undertaking. <laughs> um, and a couple of times during the video, they were asking for assistance too, for those who have experience with modeling in particular, um, like 3D modeling stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you have any experience with that, uh, Rebel Z's and his team would love to speak with you. <laughs> but yeah. I, I recommend checking out the development diary. Yeah, development diary. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot how to read the development diary of uh, Sky Oblivion because it looks pretty dang cool for a huge fan project that may see its completion the next couple of years. Maybe. Yeah. I I don't hold up too much hope for these kind of things. Like, I'm not, until it's actually here, whenever there's like a big project like this, I'm just like, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm that way with most things, but but when it when it looks that polished at that point, then I'm just like, eh, it might be getting pretty close. Yeah, I mean, because they have a lot to show. Can definitely say they've been working on it for a long time. Yeah, that's that's it. Although now it is like closer. My brain's just thinking like, but what if it's bad? Yeah, <laughs> we've seen big mod projects before that have just been like absolutely trashed when they come out and are just like, all oh, this sucks, we hate it. And then that's like all of the headlines about it because it's a big project that took ages and then people were just like, nope, hate it, it sucks. Yeah. And Because there was one particular aspect got put on blast and then it yep. just destroyed the mod itself, basically. Yeah, like, I don't... I'm not sitting here thinking, oh yeah, that's going to happen with Sky Oblivion, but it's like, that could happen with Sky Oblivion. And with how long they've spent on this, it's it's going to be real bad if something goes really bad. Yeah. Um, I mean, the goal is, is to be faithful, not not take not take their own liberties with an entirely new story. So, yeah, they have that benefit of having at least guidelines. Um, yeah. Instead of just winging it and making something offensive. So. <laughs> uh, I I would like to see and have a chance to play Sky Oblivion when it comes out. And hoping that it, again, is in a couple years. Yeah. Tell us in the comments if you're excited for Sky Oblivion. If you're excited to play Oblivion in the Skyrim engine, crazy fan-made projects in Skyrim are nuts. Something else that's nuts. <gasps> a new saga begins with The Witcher. We got a, a proper announcement from yeah. CD Projekt Red mm -hmm. via TheWitcher.com/en/news. <laughs> slash four two one six eleven slash a dash new dash Sega dash begins. Uh, this was announced on March twenty first, twenty twenty two. We're happy to announce Wait. that the next installment in the what? 
When? <laughs> Sorry, I, I, March 21st is so long away now. It like came out of this news dropped right after the last episode. That's why we're covering it now, but... It did, yeah. That is so long ago. Oh, man. Okay. To be fair, this is the first I've heard of it, so... We're happy to announce the next installment in the Witcher series of video games is currently in development, kicking off a new saga for the franchise. And we got a screenshot of her feline uh, medallion, um, and it just says, The Witcher, a new saga begins. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of it says... This is an exciting moment as we're moving from Red Engine to Unreal Engine 5, beginning a multi-year strategic partnership with Epic Games. It covers not only licensing, but technical development of Unreal Engine 5, as well as potential future versions of Unreal Engine where relevant. We'll closely collaborate with Epic Games developers, with the primary goal being to help tailor the engine for open world experiences. Okay, now you can boo. I'm not going to boo this time. <laughs> yeah. It continues on, at this point, no further details regarding the game, such as a development time frame or release date, are available. Uh, Red Engine, the technology which powers Cyberpunk 2077, is still being used for the development of the upcoming Cyberpunk 2077 expansion. I feel like that was just added on later. <laughs> that feels kind of like it. <laughs> I've just clicked on the comments thingy, and first off, there's an update they've added to this. Update, we are not planning on making the game exclusive to one storefront. Yep. And people in the comments are all being really negative. Like, yeah. the f first comment is not buying this in a million years. Oh. E Epic, Epic Games, those two words are a trigger phrase hmm. for everyone, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> uh, <sighs> gonna remind my dear listeners our dear listeners, that uh, Epic made the Unreal Engine. It's used in thousands of games. <laughs> oh. Many of which are not in the Epic launcher. Just as a heads up. <laughs> but they made Fortnite, so we have to hate them. Uh. We have to. It's our duty as gamers. Mm -hmm. You know how all gamers hate Fortnite? That's why it's one of the most popular games out there, because we all hate yep. it so much. Yep. <laughs> I should I should have mentioned the the new the new Fortnite season or not season the the next chapter of season whatever yeah where there's they more, removed building yeah, more <laughs> just Fortnite made it a Fortnite now. straight up battle royale I'd probably be better at it now yeah you probably would uh looks like Nelsar is, is looking to get back into it too he was like I I want to play it again and I'm like nah, I don't know I don't know man so anyway just because. Somebody is using Epic's engine does not mean that they're going to be on the Epic Game Store or an Epic exclusive. It's silly that that's what people got out of this small yeah. paragraph. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> and not, the fact that they had to clarify it. Yeah, not all of the outrage is, oh, Epic bad. Some of it is, oh, Cyberpunk was disappointing, so now every single game you make in the future will be terrible, because that is the way we are programmed now. You make mm, one bad thing, everything you made in the past was clearly bad as well. Let's revisit yeah. it in a video essay and talk about why it was never that good in the first place. <laughs> yeah, that's right, other YouTubers, yep. I'll call you out. <laughs> Vaguely, <laughs> because I don't actually know who you are. We all know CD Projekt Red's bad now. Yeah, man. <laughs> why does every developer not just stop making games after they made my favorite? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, School of the Cat, I'm, I'm really hoping that this ends up being a Siri game it could be like that's that seems like kind of where the witcher 3 left off like Geralt's done and mm. and siri one of the endings is she becomes a witcher yep so like it's it's there it's there to happen it yeah. might mm -hmm. or it might be a completely new character that we have to develop an affection for like we did with Geralt. we'll just have to wait and see mm -hmm. this is another thing where in several years time we'll be talking about it again once there's actual news yeah, because there's there's no further details, as yeah. it said in the in the thing for, for the game. Like, I so. do wonder how far away it is, considering they're talking about it now. Because this could be one of the things where they're just like, oh yeah, we're working on it, like they did with Elder Scrolls Six. They're just like, yeah, we're working on this. It's a long time away. That is all. Goodbye for five years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically it for the future of The Witcher, so far, and. Of course, we have cyberpunk stuff that's going to happen, too. Yeah. So something that did happen that I didn't talk about early enough, because this happened in the first half of March. Yep. We missed was it. Was the Video Game Accessibility Awards hosted by Alana Pierce. 
as well as several of her friends. And this is an award show made for recognizing games and developers that added decent accessibility options to their games for... Sarge, can you can you help me here? Can you help me out? Accessibility awards. They are good. They talk about how video games are becoming more accessible and kind of shed a brighter light onto, hey, here's all these things these developers are doing to make sure more people are able to play the games who normally may not be able to. Yes. I don't know what else to say. I'll, I'll be honest, I am very distracted by the sponsored by Pizza Hut thing because the <laughs> hosts are surrounded by pizza. Yes. It's excessive. <laughs> like, yes, they are. How many pizzas are we looking at here? Like 10, 15 pizzas per person? And that, that's taking all of my attention right now. Yeah. And accessibility can uh, doesn't have to be something complicated for a lot of cases. I don't probably needs to be stated as well. Like yeah. something as simple as color blindness uh, mm -hmm. settings in your game that that's an accessibility option that can be added to a game yeah um all the way to uh another example that they used in uh in their discussions was um b the ability to simply bypass certain parts of games like yeah. if if you have uh difficulty with certain motor skills or something like that like you can or or like quick time events that are awful or button mashing or stuff like that ways yep. to bypass those things so you can get to the rest of the game are also options in some some games that they highlight in this award show mm. which is really good everybody should have a chance to play yep. so that's that's a it's, it's a cool thing that happened and there there was a little bit of star power in this in this award show in the form of ryan reynolds yeah. deadpool himself mm. <laughs> decided to uh join in and, and uh but he revealed he was presenting the award for second channel. Yes. G games with accessibility are great. Yes. For those who want to who want to check it out, and I highly recommend you do. That is the the video game accessibility awards second second year running. Hoping hoping to see it next year is in the description. Well, designers lead designers are important in the development of games. Is that my jumping Judge. off point? Or, yes, oh, it, it is. It is. I, I thought the connection had gone dead. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> um, oh man, you not set me up good for this, dude. My head's gone blank. I'm sorry. There is a lead designer for Starfield named Emil Pagliarolo. Pag Pagliara Pag. <laughs> we can't pronounce Emil's last name. <laughs> We're sorry. I should be drunk. <sighs> I'm surprised I'm not. So Sarge, he's a Bethesda Game Studios veteran, isn't he? Yes. So Emil, despite all the memes I saw around Fallout 4's time, has been with the studio since Morrowind. You know, that game where everyone hated the writing and the design direction and all of that stuff. God, that all sucks. Come on, mm -hmm. Emil, why are you working for the company? Uh, these are the comments I heard after Fallout 4. Everyone was like, man, Emil, we're going to blame Emil for this. Because, you know, it's not like he's worked on some of the games which everyone is like, oh, these are amazing. No, they were just after him for that. But he's had a little kind of article about him where he got asked a bunch of little questions like, what's the normal day in a life? How would you get to where you are? Best thing about your job? What star filming to you? And what advice would you give to someone looking to get into game development? Like, there's a nice little interview here. It's actually relatively long, so we won't be able to go through all of it. But he talks about, like, making a game like Starfield during a global pandemic doesn't have normal days. Because it's like a huge game for them, first new IP in over 20 years, and they had to do it working from home. Which is not an ideal scenario. Yeah. And yeah, he's been at Bethesda for almost two decades now, which is a real long time. Actually, yeah, it is. I was in Crazy Eyed Eddie, friend of the channel. I was in one of his live streams the other day. We were talking about, like, the team at Bethesda and how there's a huge mix of people who have been, like, there from the very start in the industry for decades and, like, a bunch of new people in as well. It's getting to be a real mix there. And Emil's one of the veterans at this point. Wow. Can you imagine working somewhere for that long? Dude. <laughs> You'd have to really like it. He, he's been in the industry for 25 years. I've been alive for 26. 
I can't imagine anything being that long. <laughs> I haven't I haven't had a single job beyond this one, the self-employed one. Uh longer than like three, four years. <laughs> uh, I was gonna kinda say the same, but I, I I'm twenty-six, of course my jobs haven't been very long. <laughs> <laughs> If I said I've been working for 20 years, there'd be some calls <laughs> needed to be made. <laughs> you started that YouTube channel when you were a little little baby. Yep. <laughs> you were six years old. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Before YouTube even existed, you had a yeah. channel. But, uh, yeah, this is a very nice little article. I highly recommend anyone who's interested in Starfield or Bethesda as a whole, or has just seen Emil's name pop up, give it a read. Because it's a nice, nice little one. Yeah, it's it's a very positive kind of article as well. There's nothing in here that stands out to me as, oh, that's a red flag. It's all just kind of like nice, positive things of a guy who clearly loves his job and is really happy to be working there. And just really cool. Several times he says like, wow, <laughs> in this as well. And just like, oh, yeah, wow, this game is also not a part of that. Is like a quote of his. Because he yeah. seems to genuinely just love doing what he does. That's, that's good. Yeah, it's nice to see. Very much so. Well, on the on the not so good side of, mm. you know, long time developers or somebody who's been in the industry for a very long time, unfortunately, some pass away, and uh, one of those such uh, writers of the original Fallout games was uh, Scott Benny. He died at age sixty one. And this was the 30th of March. That's when this article was written. I found out about it via Brian Fargo, the uh, CEO of In Exile, formerly Interplay. Brian Fargo said that he was saddened to hear of that Scott had died on the 20th, sorry, 29th of March. He goes on to say he was a brilliant writer who worked with us at Interplay on some true classics like Star Trek Judgment Rights and Starfleet Academy. Rest in peace. Somewhere in here, I believe it, it continued. I believe he was the one, Scott Benny was the one who came up with the name for Dogmeat. Also. He did indeed. And the yeah. Mysterious Stranger book. And the Mysterious Stranger, wow. Yeah, so we have Scott to thank for Dogmeat, in name, at least. Yes. Like many things, there's a bit of a team effort on all the different aspects. Yeah. The article we have from, from the Gaming Bible, Benny had a lot had a long and influential career working on a number of popular tabletop RPGs and video games over decades. His credits include a number of Star Trek games like Starfleet Academy, Judgment Rights, Starfleet Command, and Starfleet Command 2. He also worked on the original Fallout and helped introduce a number of aspects that remain with the franchise to this day. Yeah, including the Mysterious Stranger and the beloved canine companion Dogmeat. Back in 2017, Benny told uh, Steemit that he felt his contribution to the classic RPG was relatively small, saying, I didn't have much to do with Fallout. A few maps, some bits of the hub, and some systems messages, and the Mysterious Stranger perk, and I named Dogmeat. If anything endures uh, of my writing career, it will be the name of that dog. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, this article has, has several... Um, uh, tweets linked in it too for people uh, memorializing Scott Benny too. So if you're interested, that's that's linked in the description as well. Check out uh, Fallout's progeny and just uh, just a legendary developer, I guess, or a legendary yeah. writer. Something else happened for this year. Uh, mm -hmm. E3 is not happening in 2022. <laughs> It's cancelled. It got on Twitter. It said some bad stuff. It had to be cancelled. But how is it cancelled, Sarge? Well, the words it said, I'm not allowed to repeat or I'll be cancelled too. Oh, okay. No, it's, uh, yes. Wait, wait you're asking me how it's cancelled? It, 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 it just is? Wait, <laughs> it's, hold up. <laughs> what? I don't know how to answer this question. Okay. It's just not happening this year. How, also when, also why, uh, also well, where? When is no, because it's not happening. Where's also no, because it's not happening. Normally in like, <laughs> is it June or July? Okay, June, yeah. Normally in June, like mid-June, we get E3, with all of these different events and trailers, and it's often in person, but we had a not in person last time because of obvious reasons. But this time we're not getting an online event or an in-person event. There's just no E3. However, 
<laughs> this probably isn't going to change much, because a lot of the stuff kind of surrounding E3 wasn't actually E3 associated events. It was just each company doing their own presentation within the same time frame as E3 took place. So at first when I saw this, I thought to myself, oh, but I'm not going to be able to cover all of these different trailers, talk about the news. We won't have this specific time where things are mostly quiet, but then we get a whole bunch of news to cover and talk about and expand upon. And then I realized, oh, wait, yeah, we will, because Microsoft will just do their own thing. Sony will do their own thing. Nintendo will do their own thing. Everyone will still have like presentations around that time and it'll be online. The only thing you're really missing on is an in-person event, but I, I, I don't think that's a big deal to be missing out on. We had a, there was a follow-up with Jeff Jeff Keeley, um, saying that the summer the summer games fest is still on, or summer game fest is still on. Yep. Um, which is like the kind of like a pre E three show. Yeah. Kind of something like that. I'm sure that's that's gonna have some cool stuff in it too for for game previews and. And stuff so if that's something y'all are into i know i am i like seeing beautiful pre-rendered things that may or may not represent the final product yeah i mean like i said i really don't think it's gonna change much because mm -hmm. everyone's kind of starting to do their own thing anyway i think companies may have realized at this point that the in-person big events don't matter as much as the trailers so just trailer dumping season in June without the E3 logo on it. Yep. I don't, I don't know how to segue. Okay, I, I was waiting in case you were going to say anything else about it. If you had any nope. thoughts. You know what else has letters and numbers in its name? <laughs> Fallout 76 and Double Eleven. Wow. Yeah. All of these things with letters and numbers. Surely there's a link. There must be a link. This couldn't be random. It's all connected. Double Eleven are excited to announce that we're working with at Bethesda Studios to craft new and exciting challenges for vault dwellers everywhere in Fallout 76. You can find out more on our blog at double11.com. And by more, they mean uh, not really more. Basically, yeah. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, they're working on it. They seem happy <laughs> in a post. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's been this way, but only people that Double Eleven have tweeted at can reply to this announcement. Yeah. Which is interesting. I mean, it means we don't get replies. I, I'm seeing more and more of that on Twitter, though, honestly. Mm. Just a lot of times with announcement tweets, that just being a thing. Like, and considering 76 has... Uh, online as its whole kind of discussion thing. It's probably a smart move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although, last time I did see, like, 76 news and people being like, oh, it sucks. All the replies being like, no, it's actually quite fun, seem to be getting more support than the angry ones. So I think more than anything, there's less people on the, god, it's the worst thing ever game, and it's starting to settle down as, yeah, I had a bad launch and stuff, but people enjoy it for what it is. It's slowly mm -hmm. making its way there. Uh, it's got a new team working on it, which means Bethesda Austin will probably have more time to work on other games, because there's a lot of games that Bethesda are working on. A lot of games. Might be The Elder Scrolls, might be Fallout 5. <laughs> yeah. Might be anything. So Might be things. Starfield. Yeah. Microsoft could be asking them to help out with some other stuff as well. Bit of inter-studio stuff. Going on. Yeah, yeah. So there's um, a lot of companies. It's worth mentioning uh, what Double Eleven is responsible for, like otherwise, mm -hmm. too, which yep. um, uh, one is Rust, which is yeah. probably the only post apocalyptic in their list of things. Um, mm -hmm. Goat Simulator, I guess that could be post apocalyptic. <laughs> Goat Apocalypse. <laughs> Prison Architect. Mm -hmm. um, Crackdown 3. Figure that's not really worth mentioning because it wasn't received very well. It wasn't. Um, Lego Harry Potter collection. I'm I'm pretty sure I don't know of any Lego game that was like the people were just like this is bad. <laughs> Generally, people seem to like them. So, but uh, and Little Big Planet, uh, PlayStation Vita. <laughs> yeah, I worked on did some work on Limbo as well, which was yep. received pretty well. Yep. And um, um, Minecraft Dungeons that stood out to me. Oh yeah, I completely glossed over that. Yeah, they, they seem to be a company, there's a line here, 
which is whether it's updates or performance boosting, at Double Eleven are on board to lend an expert hand. They seem very much like a continuation of the project kind of company, as opposed to here's our brilliant idea that we're going to realise. Mm -hmm. So having them on to 76 at a late date seems like something that they're familiar with. Like they're 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 good at picking up the slack if if that's needed. Yeah, better outsourcing to make sure the game can just tick along while Bethesda themselves can focus on other things, would yeah. be my guess. I'm sure there will still be, like, people within Bethesda still working on parts of the game and everything, but doing it this way gives them some other stuff to focus on. Yeah, more more developers, good. Yeah. More people working on a project, good. Mm. More good, good. More good, good, yes. Less good, not good. <laughs> <laughs> These kind of insights, you couldn't get them elsewhere, I want you all to know that. Yeah, we're we're both not with it at all today, <laughs> it seems like. Um, oh god, don't reveal uh, that to them, we were masking good. it so well. Dude, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna have spent so much time editing this. <laughs> yeah, this is out late, blame both of us honestly. <laughs> uh, well, something that's, that could be bad and good, just like our commentary. Uh, the gamer articles are, are making a comeback as our topic because yeah. last one was was so good. So people liked it last time, so we're doing it. It seemed again. like people like it a lot. So we're gonna yeah. we're gonna maybe tear this one to shreds too. Maybe get through it all because this this is a this is an interesting one, mm -hmm. but it is related to New Vegas. This article, written by Charles Bergar, which is not the same person who wrote the last article that we went over so there might be something different here um this article is a list of 10 hidden quests fans missed no it's in not Fallout new vegas it's a list of 30 hidden quests fans missed in fallout new vegas what what did i say you said 10 i think you, i think your brain was like no he can't mean 30 that would be far too many there's clearly not 30 hidden quests so i really said 10 for you you said 10 Oh my god. I mean, 10 hidden quests that are missed in Fallout New Vegas, that'd be a somewhat reasonable list. But no, we're looking at 30 quests, which you god. lot, man, you've missed all of these. I am so not here. <laughs> uh, well, let's get started then. <laughs> the, the intro of this article says, Fallout New Vegas had a huge open world a lot with a lot to explore, talking in past tense. Here are some of the most commonly missed quests. I don't know how they found their metrics for this. Oh, some of it is just going to be straight up wrong, but I think it's literally like they probably asked around in the office if people were familiar with this quest and they probably said no and they were like, it's good enough. Maybe something along those lines, yeah. <laughs> Continuing the intro, uh, Fallout New Vegas is held in high regard by many fans for its excellent writing and branching quest design. Its combat and visuals haven't aged as gracefully, yet the game still lives on as a fan favorite for many. The great quest design of New Vegas permeates the main quests, side content, and even unmarked quests that most players never notice. Some of New Vegas' most memorable and unique quests are hidden from you, whether that's because of specific pre prerequisites or bugs. For diehard New Vegas fans and newcomers alike, let's look at some of the game's most hidden and forgotten quests that are worth your attention. And this was updated December 20th, 2021 by William Quick. Even though it's been some time since Fallout New Vegas has been released, people continue to play it both casually and professionally. There are many things hidden across Nevada Wasteland, including numerous quests <laughs> that don't activate unless you seek them out. It, I don't know why it seems so funny for me, seeing as we're both technically working right now, but playing Fallout New Vegas professionally makes it sound more like esports kind of thing, rather yeah. than just making content on it and maybe streaming <laughs> it on Twitch every once in a while. Yeah. We're professionals. Uh, I want to imagine like one of those big sold out arenas <laughs> and everyone's just playing New Vegas. Yep. Uh, no no eye contact whatsoever. No, it's just, nope. just playing New Vegas. Yep. Just, just playing New Vegas. <laughs> I don't know why this, this update was here though. Update by a different person. Yeah. And it, it doesn't add anything new. It's just one it, random. They're just saying here. kind of the same thing that the initial... I'm gonna guess because then it shows the article as being newer and more recent so it'll get more clicks onto it. You know how sometimes you can like update tags and stuff on a video to get YouTube to like uh... re-look at it? Yeah, I'm putting my money on it being that. Yeah, you're probably right. Because <laughs> it, it says it says updated on the article itself rather than yep. the initial posting date. 
So instead of this being an article that's really old, it's a more recent one now, which people will click on. So we, we have no idea <laughs> when the original one was written, but we're going to rip it apart anyway, because yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, right. So we'll start with number 30. Sarge, what's number 30? Is a final plan for Esteban. And to be fair, this is like uh, not bad starting. It says that it's one of several small, unmarked quests in Fallout New Vegas. It's also pretty well hidden. To start this quest, you must talk to Christina Morales, a private in the NCR sitting in the concourse of Camp McCarran. Is her name pronounced Morales? Morales? Yeah. Morales, yeah. Morales tells you her husband perished in a fight with some nearby fiends. Unfortunately, the NCR is so overrun they can't even retrieve his body. She asks you to go in, clear out the fiends, and bring his body back to her nearby NCR encampment. Completing the quest will grant a discount for Dr. Kemp's medical supplies and services at Camp McCarran. So I don't think it's a terrible start here. Like, when I looked at this initially, I didn't instantly recognize it. But after reading that, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that quest. I do it most playthroughs. It's mm. it's an NPC who you will likely walk past several times. And it's as soon as you talk to her, it's like her whole deal. So it's very easy to pick up this quest. So I, I, I dispute the pretty well hidden. But it is like a little unmarked quest, I suppose. Is it actually, is it unmarked? Or does it give you a quest marker? I, it think, might it give, might... I think it might give you a quest marker, actually. I think it might actually be a quest. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's an actual quest. You know what? Let's just check these. I'm checking it. It is an unmarked quest. Okay, it um, says unmarked. I remember his body's pretty easy to find, Mo. Yeah, receive the corpse, retrieve the corpse of Esteban. Wait, okay. Um, Heading south from McCamp McCarran towards the map marker is one approach. So there is a map marker on it. So there's it. a marker. Why does it say yeah, unmarked the, and then it's a yeah, map marker? Yeah, what, what's the definition for unmarked it? Does it maybe mean... No, because it must come up in the quest log, surely, then. If there's a marker for it, right? Maybe it means, like, miscellaneous quest sort of thing. Yeah, the lingo it's, here is off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I do this all the time, but I do get that it's one that people might miss. Yeah, might miss. The yeah. the fact that, that she's in the concourse, which has the majority of the NPCs are if what I when I remember correctly, the majority of the NPCs that wander around in there are yeah. in spots where you will notice them, or yeah. they look different from the other NPCs. Like yeah. uh, I just brought up Christina and mm. she's wearing a um an army helmet instead of yep. an NCR helmet. Yeah. Um, it, uh, or a combat armor helmet. It also mentions in the notes section of a wiki that troopers at Cat McCarran can be heard complaining about the NCR not retrieving the body and how it's affecting Morales. So it's something people talk uh, about. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, it does... There are ways that the game leads you to her. And she's like right at the entrance too, like when you start walking through the concourse. So Yep. He's... Just like, sitting down crying quietly yeah no, not the most unmarked and hidden but i'm not angry at this being on a list if this was angry. like the if this was like <laughs> the least hidden and then it gets more and more hidden and niche afterwards this list will be fine so let's keep going and that'll totally happen yep so next one bleed me dry <laughs> yeah bleed me, <laughs> bleed me dry is more of a forgotten quest than anything this quest is tied to Westside's Fawn Arena, which totally doesn't have a giant sign with a big red arrow pointing to its entrance. Mm -hmm. A location that most newer players often overlook because they miss the giant red arrow. If you explore this underground arena, you'll come across the arena's caretaker, Red Lucy. She'll ask Courier to score the Mojave in search of various creature eggs. As you progress through the quest, the eggs you're asked to hunt become more and more dangerous, leading towards a confrontation with one of the game's toughest creatures. Which it doesn't say what it is. <laughs> if you can deliver every creature egg that one Lucy asks for, you'll be awarded the powerful Dinner Bell Shotgun. Most people who play Fallout that I've spoken to know where the Dinner Bell is. Yeah. And know who Red Lucy is because she's a romance type NPC. She is. Uh, no, where the thorn sign is. Because, because it's, a, it's giant a giant red arrow pointing down giant to the entrance. sign in the middle of an urban, like, destroyed neighborhood. Yep. <laughs> it's also, like, um, in a fast travel location as well. Like, yeah. it's not completely off the track this, or anything. This would serve better <laughs> on a quest that try to kill you list. Because... Um, yeah. 
that is bleed me dry is that because <laughs> the eggs you're sent to get like the first one is is mantis eggs which is not like a super big deal i think you yeah. have to go to to vault 22 the plant vault to get the the eggs pretty sure do you have to actually go to the location or is it one of the ones that lets you if you've got the eggs do you, do you remember I, that because I, I don't remember yeah but um after that point you have to then get like cazador eggs Ooh. so you have to fight cazadors to get to them as well as you know the third one being the death claw eggs if i'm remembering correctly i remember there was death claw and cazador eggs involved and those you know those are the two things that will kill you pretty yeah. easily you know it is not. a somewhat tough quest and i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people didn't finish it because i imagine yeah. i've only finished it once or twice oh yeah yeah like i i definitely know of it but a lot of the time in my playthroughs of fallout new vegas i just haven't really bothered because I didn't really need. And also, unfortunately, the, din the dinner bell um, doesn't count for the cowboy perk, I don't think. So... Oh, what? Because it's That's pump annoying. action, it's not lever action. Well, like, the only the only shotgun that applies is the lever action shotgun, which doesn't have unique. Which I, I made sure to check when I did my buckaroo playthrough, now that I am thinking about it. And I, there was no unique shotgun for me to use. I had to stick to the lever action and all the special ammo types. That's uh, a bit of a shame. It was still pretty devastating. Yeah. <laughs> if you build for shotguns in New Vegas, but pretty disappointing that uh, the dinner bell got got penalized a little bit for the the damage. I mean, <clears throat> still very much not a hidden quest. You know what I just noticed? Uh huh. <laughs> the article is obviously called "30 Hidden Quests Found Missed in Fallout New Vegas." The URL is Fallout New Vegas Best Side Quests. Oh! Hmm, I wonder if they changed the name at some point. Oh. <laughs> you know, a bit of clickbait to get people in here, Ooh, like we're doing right I now. I see. Okay, yep, yep. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Good, good eye, Sarge. Man. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, because, you know, these are fun little quests that aren't really particularly hidden. Um, yeah. But, but you know what, the article is still wrote like this. So if they did update and change it, they must have done a fair few edits to it. So we yeah. can still judge it and laugh at it for that reason. Yep. Because our next one is a team of moronic mercenaries. The Vicky and Mance Casino is yet another place that is quickly forgotten about. Completely disagree straight away, it's a very <laughs> significant location within the plot. Uh, they go on to say there's virtually no reason to return here after you finish your business in Prim at the start of the game, save for one. And then they say once you've completed my kind of town, wait a few days before returning to Prim, enter the Vicky and, Vicky and Vance. As soon as you enter the casino, a group of NCR deserters will try and rob you. In typical New Vegas fashion, you have a few ways of handling this confrontation. I've encountered this a fair few times. Um, it, it is like a few days after you finish My Kind of Town, so it is one you can definitely miss, because My Kind of Town is like getting a sheriff for Prim. And mm -hmm. once you've done that and the main quest stuff, there isn't much to go back there for, unless you're yeah. doing what I do and jumping to all the different merchants to sell things. Yeah. And I go there. You you have... um, Eddie is there. Uh, yeah, you haven't so... picked him up. You don't have yeah, to go if, inside the Vicky and Mance for that, but you're you still don't in have the area. To, but doesn't doesn't Johnson Nash kind of stick around in there anyway? He does like, indeed, after... yeah. That, that's why I go back. That's the excuse to go I back, go back into... and head inside. I, I yeah. remember my last time I did this. It was one of the last things I probably did in New Vegas. And I encountered this one a lot. That, that might be more of a me personally thing. And I could definitely see people not being familiar with this though. Yeah. But it's also not a quest. It's a specific encounter. Yep. And they're not mercenaries. <laughs> they're deserters. Yeah. They're, <laughs> they're also not even that dumb. <laughs> the moronic part is arguable. Yeah. yeah. They're they're filthy. Yeah. They're, all of them are, are filthy like they've been just rolling around in the dirt outside. Yeah. They're quite desperate. <laughs> Could be yeah. the desperate dirty deserters. Yes. That would have been three words of alliteration. Ah, yes. Man. But yeah. So this one, this one, we should rate these. Okay, uh, let's go back and rate these. You know, so first one, final plan for Esteban. Hiddenness out of 10. What do we give that? Hidden, hiddenness out of 10? 
yeah, so a 1 out of 10 would be, it's a main quest mission, you moron. You're not going to miss it. <laughs> and a 10 out of 10 would be, wow, I never knew about that. Uh, uh, hiddenness out of 10. I, I think I would go with um, probably a 4 for Final four. Plan for Esteban. Okay. I was thinking maybe a 5, because I know I do lots of NCR stuff, so maybe this is more familiar for me. But I feel like 4 is reasonable. Like, it's... It's a little, little out of the way, but you're probably going to come across it. It's more hidden than a side quest, I guess. Yeah. That's about it. Uh, bleed me dry from the form. I'm, I'll do a one or two on that one, because that's, okay. that's a really blatant quest. <laughs> I'd say it, it's not a one. I'll give it a two. Like, technically, you can avoid the form. There's nothing that really sends you there, naturally, I guess. Besides the fact you're playing an open world game and will explore. But, you know, if you're speed running, you won't go to the fawn. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's a thing. All right, they're moronic mercenaries and or deserters. Yeah. yeah. This one I do think is actually a little bit hidden. I'd put it as maybe like a six or a seven. Se yeah, I'd go with six or seven. Because it is a little bit out of the way. And while you may well go back to places, because once again you're playing an RPG and you want to explore the world and talk to people more than once, it's... It is the kind of thing where I can see plenty of people as having missed this encounter. Mm -hmm. It's not a quest, but it is hidden. Okay, now we're on to uh, number 27 out of 30. Yes. <laughs> Do you want to give this one a read? Keith's Caravan Charade. Um, the Aerotech Office Park, located north of Repcon HQ, is a rather barren location. It's devoid of businesses or any action, which is what makes this unmarked quest somewhat unique. Speak to Captain Parker when you arrive at the park. He suspects that a caravan player, Keith, is running a gambling and drug operation and asks you to investigate. Let's just say that his suspicions are well-founded. Uh, the Aerotech office park is a very obvious location because it's, it's, it's like its own cell, right? Yeah. Like you discover it and then you walk in and then to me, like that tells me that something is going to go on here when it's its own kind of enclosed area. Um, and Captain Parker is a pretty obvious presence. I'm pretty sure he's just wandering around outside. Yeah, he's like super, super obvious. He's also like <sighs> the only military dude that's not in like just standard gear. He's, he stands out. The only the only thing that would make this hidden is is just like the theme of the quest, which is Keith being real sneaky about his operation. Yeah. Hidden to other NPCs maybe, but not really hidden to the player. The thing is, I <laughs> I was like, do I remember this? And I is very there's either a second half to this quest, which is more exciting, where the no, no it must be yeah, it must just be this is the whole thing. I remember it is the teddy bear quest, which is what's going on in my mind. The teddy bear quest. I found a teddy bear, which was evidence of him, like, doing kidnapping and stuff. And Captain Parker didn't accept that. I wanted different evidence, and I got very angry. Uh... That's how I remember this quest. So my memory of it is different, but it's very much a standout quest for me within the game. Yeah. there, There's, like, t a couple of scenarios of... um, Or a couple of other quests that happen here too or that kind of i want to say almost lead you here vault 35 yeah. is it vault 35 i can't remember any of the names of the vaults i can barely remember the numbers the, of the vaults that the you start irradiated the game one in. like if you save if you save the dwellers of of the irradiated vault to the east um the aerotech office park is where they end up oh okay um same with the the winds in Cottonwood Cove. If you save them from the slavers, um, they will end up in Aerotech Office Park, I believe. That makes sense. Uh, this <laughs> this one is not very hidden, because um, it's it's kind of it's also kind of surrounded by by like a couple of open fields and stuff. It was already it was described that way too. Aerotech Office Park is a, is a rather barren location. It's devoid of any business or action because it's also surrounded by farms. So. Yeah. Everything's kind of directing you towards this one spot that has stuff or has people in it that you can talk to and do stuff for. So I don't, yeah. I don't really consider this one hidden. I'd, I'd put this at an eight. Wait, no, H higher is more hidden. Low is oh, less higher hidden. is more hidden. Oh man, yep. my bad. Uh, like two. a three, two or three, two. Uh, two okay. I'd do two. Two. Uh, um, yeah, I'm okay with that. I guess. I, I'd have gone three personally myself, but I think this is more me just having it as a slightly more forgettable thing than anything 
it's hidden from me because I forgot most of it. <laughs> uh, but yeah. on to the next one, which is oh, it's a beauty. You wanna you wanna give it a read, Kato? This one's this one's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty six out of thirty. The the list is counting down, and we're and our scoring yep. system is is counting up. So it's 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 gonna get a bit confusing since we're not doing like a ranked list or anything, or a a ranking. Anyway, yeah. uh, Twenty six is is three card bounty. The uh, bounty hunting is nothing new in Fallout, but there's something about New Vegas's three card bounty quest that's strangely unique. If you tend to side with Caesar's Legion in your playthroughs, there's a good chance you miss this quest. No, most people don't. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you play Fallout New Vegas in a way that most people don't, you might have missed some quests. Uh... Like the main ones. <laughs> hey, did you know if you've never sided with the NCR, there's a whole NCR storyline? Crazy, right? Hashtag hidden. Mm-hmm. Oh, carry on. Uh, keeps going. Speak to Major Daughtry at Camp McCarran to get started. This, These are marked quests. Yes. Um, the targets, I think the targets may be unmarked, but it is like a quest that you get. It's, uh, there's markers that send you to those locations. I don't know if they okay. send you exactly to the targets or just to the location, but yeah, it's super marked. You you get a whole thing about shoot, don't shoot them in the head because then you get extra cash if you don't do it that way. It's it's a super in depth quest. Yeah, this is a one on the rating. Yeah. It's <laughs> how how do you miss this? I mean, they, I suppose they cover themselves by saying if you tend to side with Caesar's Legion, but I think they should have said if you exclusively side with Caesar's Legion from the very start of the game and never do NC any NCR stuff, then you might have missed this quest. Yeah. Um, yeah, this one, this one's pretty in your face. <laughs> yep. Because I'm pretty sure it's another one of those things where the NCR troopers do talk about it, or yeah. at least mention I mean, it. You also can run into these characters just out and about, because they don't just spawn in from the quest existing. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're just like also you, there. You can take the trophy from their bodies, I believe, before you even have the quest, right? Yep, you, you can just go and kill them straight away. Yeah. It's also um, probably one of the first NCR quests you'll get, because yeah. you can pick it up straight away before entering, like, the main McCarran building as well. Because mm -hmm. Major Darty's, like, between you and the door, essentially. Yeah, and 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 you see Buster on your way there, and he's yep. he's the one that's that's one of the people that's been hired, or try going to be hired, to um, work on this bounty as well, but then he chickens out, and then ends up dead in Freeside. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Is is that in here? I wonder if that's in here. I mean, they I haven't don't mentioned it. I haven't looked at all, all of those. <laughs> um, this this one. Okay, I'm a I'm a the three card bounty. I didn't read the whole thing, but I just got to the the bottom of it. Hold on. <laughs> it says Daughtry will ask you with killing three fiend will task you with killing three fiends. Sorry, Violet Cook Cook and Driver Nefi. Each fiend has a unique personality that you can exploit. Violet loves dogs. How do you exploit that? It's just <laughs> more mean... targets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cook Cook enters a frenzy of his Brahmandides. That is an exploit. That is a that is a good way to make him go nuts. Um and Driver Defy can be taken down by assembling an NCR sniper team. If you want to preserve the head, I would <laughs> recommend not bringing a sniper team. Yeah. Um even though you can. Uh, but at the very bottom it says if you're playing New Vegas on PC, you can also install a mod that enables dialogue with these three fiends. They have some interesting things to say, to put it lightly. Fiends dialogue. So is this cut content? Um, that's kind of what I'm wondering. It sounds like it, yeah, it's still in the game files. Mm. But you need to make the fiends friendly towards you, so you need to use some mod for that. So this is a mod that only works if you use another mod as well. Hmm. Yeah, With too much work. Also, not things. everybody has a PC, so... Yeah. There's that. That's not a hidden quest at all. The hidden part of that is 100% wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is a quest I do every single playthrough. Yeah, three-card bounty. That's that's a one. That's a one for yeah. me. Next one on the list, I don't recognize. 25 out of 30, I love bananas, is the name of this one. Mm. Don't let this quest names fool you. I Love Bananas has very little to do with bananas. Imagine that. Wow. Located in the fiend-ridden Vault 3, you'll stumble across three- You'll stumble across three members of a caravan imprisoned by the fiends. You can help them escape the vault by finding a key to their holding cell. 
If you free the caravan members, they'll give you the password to the overseer's computer. Be sure to give the password a read. Because I love like bananas as a password. It might be. Maybe that is for reference of the name. Yeah. But you know what? I don't remember this. But I also don't really remember Vault 3 it's, that well. It, there's not much to it. Like, yeah. It, the only quest really involving it. Oh wait, no, you you do get the the job from Motor Runner, but he's he's kind of off and to the right in the vault. Mm. If if you really go into Vault Three and and work with the cons and the fiends, um, but there's there's not much that goes on within Vault Three, not besides exploration and and maybe a little loot here and there. Um, not much reason to explore Vault 3 much. Maybe that's maybe that's part of it. Yeah. There is an NCR Ranger also, like, stuck in this vault on the left side that you have to save. I wonder if that one's in here. <laughs> but saving the caravanners, that's that's like a pretty yeah, that, that's a pretty good secure one. I'll I'll give that one uh probably like a six. Six? Okay. Six or six or seven. I'll go seven with this one. Seven. Alright. Uh, this is one where I feel like I could well have done it, but it's a real insignificant thing to just save a few NPCs and get a password that I will not remember it. Like, I could have done it on my last playthrough and I'd have no idea that I did it, because yeah. why would I keep that as a memory? Yeah, it's it's not <laughs> something anything overly exciting. It's nope. just, you know, a, a few people in cages find the key, yeah. murder all the fiends, which you've probably done before a lot. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. <clears throat> Number 24 out of 30 is classic inspiration. The apocalyptic wasteland can make for some great views, something that Sheldon Weintraub agrees with wholeheartedly. Travel to M Mich Michelangelo's shop on the far side of the strip. Speak to a character named Michelangelo. He'll give you a camera and ask that you take photos of signs you find throughout your travels. It's a great change of pace for most of New Vegas's quests. You can take pictures yeah. and fall at New Vegas. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's a gun that yeah. looks like a camera. <laughs> yep, that's it. We had and to wait till of... 76 before we got the photo mode. Yeah, and the actual working camera that... Which is worse than the photo mode. Took screenshots, yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, I know about this quest. I feel like this is less hidden and more like, eh, I can't be bothered to do it. It's more easy to ignore than anything because he's not. Yeah. It's, just, it's kind of boring. Yep. <laughs> it's like, speaking of someone who loves photo mode style stuff, <laughs> this quest sucks. It's not interesting. New Vegas is not a particularly pretty game. Mm -hmm. uh, actually taking photos of it. Uh, generally not too big a deal. Maybe if you've got like a really nice shader pack or something, this quest becomes a bit more interesting. Actually take shots you like, but you can't view the shots, can you? No, you can't. No, so all you're doing is putting like a different <laughs> UI over it for a few Michelangelo seconds. Michelangelo has to develop the film once you yeah. take the pictures. Um, yeah. Less hidden, more pointless. Do you get a good reward for this? I can't remember what you even get. I, I don't remember at all. Uh, is it actually called Classic Inspiration? Let's let's have a quick Google of that. Duh. Yep. Rewards. Oh, you get caps, XP, and some strip fame. <laughs> yeah. That's it? Yep, that's it. Wow. Yeah. Um. Also... Sh they said Sheldon Weintraub? I was like, Sarah Weintraub doesn't have a brother, does she? Yeah, she does. She does? Yes. Oh. Um, it's Michelangelo. Oh, no, well, it's not Sheldon, though. His actual name Sheldon Vine Weintraub, or Weintraub, however you pronounce it. Oh, that's his actual name? Yeah, he just chose the name Michelangelo instead. Oh. Cato Genesis. Oh, okay. <laughs> We know how this goes. You have a name okay. you don't like, you pick a better one for your creative career. Well, yeah. I learned something today. Uh, yeah, I'm, g I'm gonna give that one pretty low on the hiddenness scale. Probably like a six. It's a little bit out of the way, but it's more just one that nobody wants to do because it sucks. That's right, New Vegas fans. <laughs> New Vegas has bad quests. I'm gonna say bad five. Bad quests where you just shoot 
camera. Yeah, right, right down the middle. <laughs> no, that's fair. Yeah, because because a lot of the stuff on the this is tucked away at the very back of the strip, so yeah. it it can be totally missed because you have all the other stuff on the New Vegas Strip to to yeah. enjoy. And do. I mean, for me, I so. always go straight to the end because I'm just picking up magazines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just every time. Oh, my. I've got to read out this next one just because I love it so much. 23 out of 30, coming out of her shell. Coming out of her shell is a marked quest <laughs> tied to the Old World Blues yeah. DLC. <laughs> Man, I love these unmarked hidden quests we're talking about. Yeah, so unmarked. <laughs> yeah, although most players tend to miss it due to its specific requirements. Once you've completed the Picking Your Brains quest, you'll be able to speak to each scientist individually. Talk to Dr. Dala. You'll need to have perception score of 8 or higher, the lady killer slash Cerise La Femme perk, or a teddy bear to start the quest. She'll start asking you some interesting questions that give the quest name a whole new meaning. Yeah. <sighs> Will we call him a still hidden? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Uh, two. <laughs> two, yeah. I'm gonna I mean, say it's two. It's DLC, so... The tiny bit out of the way. It's not actually a main quest. Yeah, but it's it's but. it's the think tank. Like they, yeah. what they try to excel at, they do pretty well the first time through. You want yeah. to talk to the think tank, so yeah, like the Absolutely. motivation is there. You consistently go back to them, like yeah, they're the only people to talk to in the DLC. Really, that too. It's Everything that and else the outside is trying to kill you. You have one location for conversation. Everywhere else is combat. Yeah. And the thing, yep. the, the thing people like about Old World Blues is the conversation. You yeah. don't really hear people talking about the combat of it being like, oh, it was amazing, because, you know, it's New Vegas, it's a bit of an old game. So, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Mobius and his Robo Scorpion. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I like, I oh. like hearing Dr. Mobius over the intercom more than I like fighting his scorpions. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to give you these next two. And just groan for out. Uh, <laughs> yep, like that. Uh, <laughs> I've only seen the title ghoul. of the next one as well, and I'm already just like, oh, you've just done the same thing twice. Yeah, twenty-two. No, a little different. Uh, you'll you'll see what you'll see what I think about the the other one, but but okay. number twenty-two out of thirty is is old school ghoul. This is just referring to Raul mm -hmm. in Black Mountain. Yep. Uh He's, it a says he's arguably the most overlooked companion in New Vegas. What? Held hostage by Tabitha Black Mountain. Who is more <laughs> overlooked than Raul, though? I'd say he's one of the most forefront. I'd say him and Veronica and Boone are like kind of a trio. Oh, I suppose Rex as well. But you know what? He, he's like in the top tier of companions in New Vegas. He's pretty good, but he can also. <sighs> I don't think anything main quest oriented leads you directly to him, whereas a lot of the other companions. Uh, dealing with the Brotherhood, right? Don't they send you to Black Mountain? Or I, no, it's just outside Black Mountain they send you. Someone sends you to deal with Tabitha. I'm pretty sure that mm -hmm. happens, but you can avoid Raul entirely. Like you can you just can. ignore him. Yeah, but it does mean just like walking past him essentially. Like, but my first playthroughs, I remember specifically that I just didn't bother saving Raul because I didn't know he was there. So, I mean, for uh, me, I'll, he's I'll put one this of very few followers. What? Yeah, I was thinking like three or four, maybe slightly more than average hidden for me. I I say the complete opposite. As someone who doesn't play with followers, Raul is one of the very few followers who I actually encounter and pick up <laughs> and deal with. I'd say it's way way less hidden per than that. I'm saying personal experience because because he I yeah. did miss him uh, early on. Whereas Boone, you can just you just get him. That's yeah. kind of a default companion. Boone is much more out there. Yeah, but Raul's still like pretty obvious to get as a follower. Like, I'd mm -hmm. say he's in the top half of them in terms of ease of getting. It is literally if you just do what you did and happen to walk past. Yeah. But you can do the same thing with a lot of followers that way. Yeah. So, I, I, I wonder if a lot of people have the same kind of reaction with you where they just kind of walk past him or if it's more of my side of thing where it's like, yeah, obviously I'm going to talk to the friendly character in this place. 
it doesn't help that he's tucked away in a building in the back. Like, uh, most of the other but companions are, like, out, and you see them when yeah. you're doing other things. But you go to the buildings. I didn't go to that building, because it didn't man. look like I could enter it. Like, that's that's what, what? I recall, anyway. It, it's got a door! You just go for a door. <laughs> I played this so long ago, Sarge. That's fine. <laughs> to be fair, I can't remember any of my early playthroughs, so I'm only going off of <laughs> stuff after I knew some things, but still. I feel like he's not out I just boy. remember missing Raul, and then okay. realizing later, I was like, wait a minute. This companion's kind of a badass. Yeah, I also feel like he's one of the most well-known companions, so I feel like anyone who knows a little bit about New Vegas is aware of him. Yeah. Making him even less hidden. Because remember, this list isn't for people on their first playthrough. It said for veterans and new players alike. Mmm. Yeah, we're not judging this on in your first playthrough. Will you definitely encounter this? Okay. It's like, hey, you enjoy playing New Vegas. Here's something you probably haven't seen. And we're like, no, we're, we know this. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. 21 out of 30. <laughs> I don't even know if we're going to get through all of them. We might have to the make this a two-parter. We should we should make this a two-parter actually. Uh, yeah. let's get let's get to let's get 15 in and then do the other 15 the yep. the next episode. 21 out of 30, the Wind Brahmin Wrangler. This is a nightkin that is cloaked mm. at a farm with nothing else going on besides a bunch of tumbleweed. Mhm. <laughs> Um, it says tucked away in the far top right corner of the map, top left, not top right, top left corner of the map is Brooks Tumbleweed Ranch and a unique encounter that most players miss. If you go out back to the fenced in area, you'll be approached by an unnamed nightkin. He'll tell you that he has wind Brahmin he wants to sell you. His asking price, all of your bottle caps. It doesn't matter if you have one or a million, the nightkin wants it all. Uh, should you decide to purchase the Wind Brahmin, be ready for a huge disappointment. Yeah. So, first thing, which you immediately corrected, is they got the position in the map wrong. Very wrong. Because it is at the very <laughs> top of the map, towards the left-hand side. I'd yeah. argue it's not even in the corner. Like, it's not in the corner, but it's, it's... That's that's a bit more finicky, but it's on the top, very top of the map, on the left-hand side. Yeah. Yeah. And they've said the right-hand side, so if you're going off this article, you're not reaching the location. Mm -hmm. Now this one, I can say I have accidentally stumbled into this encounter more than once. I will regretfully say that it was only a couple of playthroughs ago that I noticed that I found him. Uh, so I, he's missable. He's very much missable yeah. because he's invisible. <laughs> I do think this is definitely one of the more hidden ones. Not a quest. Not a it is quest. an encounter, as they say. Yeah, but definitely more hidden. Mm -hmm. I honestly, I find it surprising for me the amount of times I will not only bump into him, but be jump scared because I forget that he's there <laughs> and that that's the location, and I just suddenly end up in a dialogue with an invisible night kitten. Mm -hmm. And it's entertaining too. It is entertaining. Yeah. It's a fun little encounter where you yep. lose all your cash. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I'd give this one relatively high. I'd say, like, maybe a 7 or an 8 on the hiddenness. I'll go, I'll go with 9. This guy's... Nine. This guy's it's, he's cloaked. He's cloaked. Yeah, that's I'm gonna, fair. I'm going to give him a 9. You know what? I think I'll actually change that. Yeah, 9. I, I think what's annoying me more is encounter versus quest from the actual <laughs> hiddenness. He's using a stealth boy. <laughs> yeah. Nice and hidden, out the way, little fun moment. Uh, this one... This, this one's just... Okay. <laughs> 20 out of 30 we're counting down still uh yep. thought for the day the 188 trading post is a rest stop that most players only visit once on their playthrough to pick up veronica a companion with a history with the brotherhood of steel beyond that there isn't much reason to go back there wrong there's two <laughs> merchants there there's three merchants there there's multiple merchants Incorrect. there plus this is assuming you pick up veronica instantly as you're walking past oh yeah yeah because, you know, you definitely wouldn't have just picked up Boone or anything like that. Yeah, and this this is on the way, you know, north from Novak, where you probably would have picked up Boone <laughs> yep. if, you're, if you're on your first playthrough. And Veronica's just like, hey! <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, why would I want you? Everything around me is getting insta-killed. Yeah. I'm fine, buddy. 
Uh, anyway, it says, however, there is one NPC at the 188 trading post that's worth talking to. Wow. Named the Forecaster. This child supposedly has psychic powers and can tell your future. While most of his predictions are vague, he does allude to Veronica's past and Mr. House's interest in Hoover Dam. If psychic powers sound like a stretch, there were psychics in the first Fallout game. There was one, and it was the Master. <laughs> yep. Just a, just a little correction there. He is wearing the, the little, um, the neurological whatever headpiece thing? Thing, yeah. Yeah, which is a, a bit of an Easter egg to the first game because you can get that um to block the the mental damage that the master does when you're approaching him yeah the um the examples that they use for his telling the future and psychic powers and stuff are alluding to someone's past and working out some of mr house's very obvious motive yeah. Like, those feel like bad examples. Like, oh, he's got mystical powers. Someone who's hanging around at the same place as him. He knows this a bit about their a past. fortune cookie. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Arnie's worked out Mr. House might like power <laughs> to power the giant shining city unlike anything else in the yes. world right now. Yes. Mm, definitely psychic powers going on here. Yeah. This one's a one. A one. Uh, least least gonna... hidden. Because it's just a kid sitting out in the 188 trading post, which you will go back to multiple times to sell things. I was going to say maybe a two or a three, because I suppose you have to talk to him, but you do go right past him, so I'm not going to... He's right next to like, the Gunrunners. Yeah, I'm not going to defend my two or three. It's, I, I just hate children, so I probably don't talk to him quite often. That's about it. We'll put him at a zero. <laughs> <laughs> also, once Kids again, not, psych, psych, not a quest, barely even an encounter, just an NPC at this point. Yeah. That's all it is. Like, the last one was pretty close to an NPC. We're at a follower at this point. Even this, I mentioned earlier how the URL is like Fallout New Vegas' best side quests. We very quickly got away from side quests. We're going away from hidden stuff. This article is slowly becoming 30 things in New Vegas that we remembered and were able to put into an article. Just 30 things in New Vegas. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the list. <laughs> 30 things in New Vegas. Uh, they may they right. may be something you haven't seen. They may be best side quests. We don't know even. Yep. They may be number 19 out of 30, defacing <laughs> the humble stone. Lesser quests... God. Ah. And more of a neat little detail. Defacing the humble stone is the name of an interaction you may have with an NTR trooper at Boulder City. The first time you make it to the city, you might run into Private Kowalski, viewing a monument. It moralizes all the NCR troopers who perished at the first battle of Hoover Dam at four years before the start of the game. Kowalski's brother perished in that battle. Should you deface the monument in any way, be ready for a heated conversation. One out of ten. You're sent to Boulder City by the quest. He's very obviously standing there. It's like the only thing he talks about. Of course you're going to shoot the memorial. You're playing a Fallout <laughs> game. You're shooting everything. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll put that more at a three or yeah. four. Yeah. It's it's <sighs> fair. It's fairly hidden. It, it, like... I mean, Mainly you're he's, sent there in the main quest. You are sent there. You are sent there by the main quest. But I don't think I actually, like, defaced <laughs> the memorial until, like, several playthroughs later. Um, yeah. Because I didn't even know that was a that was a thing you could do. Because uh, a lot of the time, quests don't do that. They don't have that kind of reaction to, uh, yeah. to doing something in the game. I mean, to be fair, I suppose for the actual interaction of you specifically as the player defacing the stone, I'm happy to have it as a free. As for just finding this, it's a one. Okay. But I suppose I could be put down to a free for the very specific thing. But I, I obviously do it because he talks about it <laughs> yeah and i'm generally just shooting my gun like crazy at random points yep yep okay Man. next one number 18 out of 30 help for halford it's a great example of how less is more sometimes really <laughs> make your way to camp guardian coves to start this unmarked quest you'll come across a wounded ncr soldier named halford 
From a few lines of dialogue and a journal, you can quickly deduce that Halford's men were kidnapped and taken to this place. It's up to you how to handle the situation and whether Halford gets out alive. It's a great unmarked quest that shows the NCR's co incompetence in assisting its men in times of need. This is the cave that throws out a radio signal. Oh, okay. <laughs> that part I didn't remember, but cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've definitely encountered him a lot, and... What's bugging me most about this is them saying that it's, like, great and just complimenting this when it's a very small side interaction. Let me, let me, let me make sure this is, this is the proper, the proper one. Yeah, at Camp Guardian, you'll receive a radio broadcast containing word of Halford's problems. That <laughs> you can't announce a, you can't announce an objective any more clear than going over the radio. Yeah. I think this one's pretty obvious. Yeah, I mean... I suppose you could give it a two, because you need to, like, head there. Mm -hmm. Like, the location is kind of out of the way, but you'll pick up the actual quest very easily. Um, yeah, I'm going to say a two. It's super obvious, really, overall. Just requires you to take the effort of going to this location. Yeah. To do, also... like, a very, very small quest. So it's kind of, like, south or southeast of the C the, the, the Avenger minigun, too? Uh, I think, yeah. So you'd have you'd have a place to test it out if I'm remembering the map properly. I have my New Vegas map actually on my wall, but my my light is putting a glare on the spot that I want to look at. <laughs> oh, oh well. Well, I'm still gonna say a two, and I'm not gonna be fought on that because, like you say, radio signal super obvious, slightly out of the way, so I won't put it as a one. Mm -hmm. It's it's not like directly in your face walking into it but it's directly in your face being told where to go. Yeah, it's like Northeast Lake Mead area. Yeah. So. yeah, okay. On to 17 out of 30, Hard Luck Blues. New Vegas has quite a few quests that involve a moral dilemma. None are quite as gut-wrenching as Hard Luck Blues, a short side quest that starts in the NCR sharecropper farms. Speak to Morgan Blake to learn about how poorly their crops have been growing lately. She thinks it has something to do with water. <laughs> Without spoiling too much, this quest quickly escalates from a small water inspection to a tough moral decision. While this quest isn't unmarked, its location in the NCR sharecropper farms makes it overlooked by most players. Swing by the area on your next playthrough and give this quest your attention. This is one where I feel like a lot of people know about it. Yeah. I will say it is like, yeah, maybe you can miss it because of the sharecropper farms, but if you're someone who spends their time online reading or just watching stuff about New Vegas, you know about this quest. Like, yeah. if you've managed to make it to this article, you've already learned all about Hard Luck Blues. Yeah, they're Vault 34. It, like, there's a there's a tie into yeah. Vault 34. Um, this is a decently sized quest chain that probably has yeah. a lot of things that lead you to it. Yeah, including the command tent being, like, dead center of the sharecropper farms. Mm -hmm. um, like, and I'm pretty sure the guard at the gate tells you to talk to their commanding officer too, right? Possibly. I must admit, I personally do avoid the sharecropper farms most of the time, but it's it's still a pretty out there and open quest for the most part. Mm -hmm. And it is the quest that whenever people talk about, like, oh, important, like, choices in gaming and stuff like that. This one comes up a lot when New Vegas is mentioned, I swear. I hear it relatively frequently in that kind of conversation. Because it does have, like, a little moral dilemma, as opposed to any, like, player action dilemmas, where it's like, oh, what reward am I going to get? You're like, no, what do I think is the right thing to do here? Yeah. Which is nice. Mm -hmm. But not all that hidden. No. What number are we giving it? Uh, two. Two. Okay. I can handle the two. Yep. All right. Kato, final one. I'll let you take this. Oh, it is the final one. 16 out of 30. Pistol packing. Uh, I just had to see that screen cap to know which, which quest it was. <laughs> Throughout the Fallout series, the Brotherhood of Steel is consistently viewed as an organization most well suited to survive the wasteland. This is for good reason, as they devote their efforts to the development and preservation of powerful technology. Despite all this, they are still human, and humans make mistakes. If you come across Knight Torres in the Hidden Valley Bunker, she will mention that a laser pistol is missing from her inventory and you can volunteer to go get it. 
This sends you on an investigation to get an idea of where it might be, which leads you to an encounter with a bunch of rad scorpions. Or a bunch of, sorry, a bunch of scorpions. Um, take them all down, get the pistol, and return it to Torres for a sweet tri-beam laser rifle and positive fame with the Brotherhood. Seeing as Knight Torres is the quartermaster, you are pretty much tripping over this quest. Yeah. This it, is if, just a side quest. It, Nothing you, hidden about it. Yeah, if you don't find the Brotherhood of Steel somehow, maybe, maybe it's yeah. all hidden. <laughs> you know what, from the earlier thing of the person saying, like, if you normally go with Caesar's Legion, I wonder if old... What, what's his name? Uh, Charles Burgar here normally plays Caesar's Legion on New Vegas and thinks other people do the same and is like, man, I finally did a playthrough that wasn't Caesar's Legion and there's all these quests I've never played. Maybe he's a wasteland evildoer, is what you're saying? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> and he's suddenly like, wow, did you guys know there's a follower called Roll? Crazy. Wow. <laughs> I've never been to Black Mountain before. Yes. Oh, I'm like, Blues, man, there's NCR quests in this game. Because, <laughs> like, actually a lot of these are, like, NCR-related stuff. We've gone through, like, oh, here's an NCR person you can go and save. Yeah. Here's another, here's an NCR bounty well, thing, which everyone does. Maybe Ber Bergar's <laughs> original writing was the best side quests, not necessarily the most hidden stuff, which it was... Re uh, changed to so this yeah. is two different people <laughs> kind of doing two different things with with the yeah. with the list so kind of like right, but... how we would rate it if it was more divisive but it's yeah. not it's not really <laughs> so this one is pretty obvious too i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a three just because it's the brotherhood and you can kind of like ignore them for the most part, uh, up, no, you can't, because because no. if you get to the end, then then Mr. House or whoever is just like, you got to deal with the Brotherhood of Steel. And I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> you have to deal with them. You have like, to. You, you'd have so. to go for a I'm gonna wipe them out kind of situation mm -hmm. in order to not deal with them. You would have to, you'd have to wipe quest. them out, and yeah. and a lot of the you still got to do that from the inside. I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, yeah. You'd have to wipe them out and be super antisocial to them. So that'd be more like a two. <laughs> Yeah. A two or a one. Yeah, alright. Well, that was half the list, and it took us yep. a while. Yep. If you want us to do the second half, do let us know in the comments. Or if you really don't want any more of this, if you can't stand it, then let us know that as well. And if, if you're impatient, like, we have this linked down below, and you can just look at it yourself. Yeah. And maybe anticipate what we're going to say, even. Yep. Give your own notes on things. Yeah. We might yeah. read them out. And, and our rating system was really strange. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey, I made it up in like two seconds. Thank you, Sarge. Uh, and 10, I refuse to change it. <laughs> Ten is most hidden. Uh, one is, you know, not hidden at all. So, yep. <laughs> you know, do your own ratings if you want to. Um, uh, so we should, should we do like what we're, what we're doing slash playing? I know I've, I've been, yeah, you've been uh, doing slash playing a lot of things. So yeah, I've got a lot. So what, but... what have you been doing? Oh man, well I've played a bunch of games, I've actually been away this past week, which meant I gotta be on my Xbox, because I was away from the computer, so I tried out Yakuza Like a Dragon, and despite playing it for like six or seven hours, I think I've realised Yakuza games just aren't for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I enjoyed it for what it was, but the Yakuza games are very much like a narrative experience, and I want to be focusing more on gameplay than narrative when I'm playing. So a game I downloaded just yesterday and really enjoyed was Monster Train. It's on Game Pass, and it's kind of like... If you played Slave Aspire, you'll be somewhat familiar with like the gameplay format of you draw cards and then you use energy to play these cards, but you play as like a commander of a hell demon train, and you're trying to defend the last fire of hell. Oh. Which is fun, <laughs> I really like it. And then for a bit of balance between pure gameplay and pure narrative, I've also been playing some more Octopath Traveler, which is a charming little kind of JRPG, kind of old school style with a turn-based combat and stuff. Very lovely. I'm slowly getting my way through the game. It's like 60 to 80 hours to beat kind of thing. So I'm getting there. But outside of that, I played some Stranger of Paradise. 
which I might have talked about last time, so I'm not going to talk about it too much for more. I'm just going to say that I've very much been enjoying that, despite it being third person. I've also <laughs> played a little bit with you, Wonderlands! Yeah. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands! We played a little bit of it, and then the servers stopped working. <laughs> yeah, it's like a really fun game. Would be great if matchmaking could just stick yeah, around I think it works time. now. I think, like, Ooh. yeah, Shift was, was kind of on it, and it took, I think, like, three days or something like that, and I think everything's okay. up and running again. Well, we'll be able to continue um, our playthrough then finally beat the game. That was, that was a rough launch for multiplayer. Yep. <laughs> but thankfully, they were kind of on the ball and fixed it as soon as they could. That's so, good. Um, also, I want to mention to you, Sarge, that Nelsar and his family members are also playing Wonderlands now, so we nice. may have some other people to play with depending Ooh. on on schedule and whatnot. So. Man, what a crazy big squad. By which I mean up to four people. Up to four, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unimaginably huge squad of adventurers. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, I also mentioned at the very end of the last Pipcast that I was, like, writing a Fallout game as part of a YouTube series, and the first two episodes of that are out now. Yes. I did my, like, initial pitch of I wrote a Fallout game. Which did really and well. And... Yes, uh, the analytics for that, <laughs> I'm going to have to send Kato like, a link to it at some point, because I have never seen such a sharp uptick in views. Like, it went from doing worse than average, to instantly shooting up, and then to kind of flatlining. Not exactly flatlining, but going to a much flatter curve again. Mm -hmm. Where, within a period of like, six hours was it? Yeah, it was about five, six hours just YouTube recommended it to tons of people and it became like my most viewed video of this time and the second video as well has been doing pretty well like not as good but that my second video was the Brotherhood of Swords where I did my own interpretation of like a Brotherhood based faction and it's got the same kind of S-shaped pattern to it but not as steep this time around but yeah people are enjoying this new series so if you are listening and haven't already check it out. I'll have a playlist up soon. I've got a new video of it coming every single week. My own pitch for a Fallout game. You can see it and be like, oh, I like that idea. I don't like that idea. And let me know. I like, I like Fallout 5 Roni. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Fallout 5 Raiders of New York, which I shortened in all my documents to Roni, I, I suppose. that was an abbreviation for Pepperoni. No. <laughs> New York uh, pizza. R -O -N -I, Dude, it can work. It can work. New York style pizza, Roni. <laughs> oh, Fallout Five, Roni. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. That's what I've been up to. What you've been doing, Kato? Oh boy, not very much. I've been playing. I played Waterlands with you. Obviously, I played a little you bit. Did. A little bit on my own with my mm -hmm. um the the necromancer dude character. Oh, nice. They're interesting. They got a bit of a Krieg vibe to them, because you're sacrificing health to deal damage. Um, uh, pretty pretty fun. Um, also, I have been playing Valheim because my server, my Discord, now has a dedicated Valheim server. Um, my laptop is just running constantly in my corner, hosting that server. So um, if you are in my Discord or want to join my Discord server, that's link down below and then the details of the Valheim server are in there um, join my server so you can join my server basically is what I'm saying um, if you want to play some play some Valheim on a dedicated server that's constantly up uh, finally I, I, I talked about it last episode but Death Stranding Director's Cut finally came out for PC it came out on the 30th and I've been playing that quite a bit um, I have a tips and tricks in the works. It's just about done. There's like one more thing I, I need to record or just give up on trying to get re get it recorded, which is buildings decaying. Uh, I started a new playthrough, so it's taking a very long time for my buildings to start decaying. <laughs> As opposed to like importing an older save where everything would be decaying. Um, but yeah, I, I've been enjoying the, the new uh, the new things that were added to director's cut. Um, it's definitely made the game a lot more approachable to newer players. 
um, a lot less frustrating in some aspects. Like the very first area of the game has both um, a ranged, a short ranged um, stun weapon for humanoids or humans, sorry, as well as um, a active skeleton or an exoskeleton basically. Um, that is like a, a jack of all trades kind of thing. Like you can carry a little bit more. It's fairly mobile. Um, and it, you can maintain your balance a lot better with it. Whereas later on you get skeletons that are, that are geared towards very specific, like honed in things like, like the speed skeleton is just for running really, really fast. Um, but you get the support skeleton to test out in the, in the tutorial area first and makes that part a lot easier to approach so um i'm into it uh there's other director's cut stuff that was added like the the buddy bot which is a delivery bot that you can like just bring with you as a companion so you can just throw cargo on him and have him follow you around <laughs> <laughs> cargo catapult i unlocked but i haven't tried it yet um it just launches cargo so so much distance away and you can go yeah. and pick it up and and hoof it the rest of the way or something um, a couple of new vehicles, and there's a whole bunch of new stuff in, in Director's Cut that I haven't been able to try yet, but I'm mm. trying to get through the main story so I can. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it has been fun, again, so far. I just wish I could That's figure good. out what is causing my CPU to ramp up so aggressively, and so I can reduce it. Most I've, I've been able to do is, is changing the affinity to, like, not use all of my CPU cores, and even that like doesn't work sometimes um no. which is weird um i wish it didn't make my computer sound like it's gonna take off <laughs> but otherwise it's still really fun so um i love me some death stranding look forward to uh tips and tricks eventually yep. maybe after this weekend or maybe this weekend i don't know yeah maybe before the next pipcast before the next pipcast definitely like <laughs> oh de definitely it's hold it to him now. it's all it's all edited i just need that one little bit left and then oh, okay. i can render it out like it's it's so close to being done but i i needed that one little thing i can just take that tip out honestly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like if i take too long to find it i'll just take it out but yeah so that's what i've been doing please tell us in the comments what you've been doing and playing there's been a whole bunch of decent games released this year so um or if or if you've gone back to something like i went back to death stranding because there was a ten dollar director's cut upgrade and i'm like yeah more death stranding i'm gonna do it <laughs> check back with us in two weeks time uh every other sunday 10 a.m pacific right here to hear us talk about more fallout and gaming news stuff in the future thanks for hanging out sarge thanks for me hanging out too <laughs> i i man bye everyone <laughs> that's when you say you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome that's the phrase man like oh, i'm just gonna stop recording now i got you i got you